Hey friends, how's everybody doing? Amy from Schoolhouse Salvage from my kitchen. And I thought maybe as I finished up a couple projects, you guys would wanna come in and chat with me. So I am homebound today with my kids who are on a snow day. It's like negative four here last time I checked. So we're on a cold day and I'm trying to get some projects done while I'm home so that I don't waste a ton of time. So I'm painting a couple little side tables and I thought if you wanted to, you could hang with me and chat um, and ask any questions you have. So this guy right here, that's kind of dark, is going to be, um, hey Wendy, this already has a coat of General Finishes Driftwood. It's a gray color. So I'm gonna get a second coat on this and then this will be done. And then this little table here, it has a coat of Steamship and I'm gonna put some Miss Mustard Seed Pink over it. So if you wanna join me, um, say hi. Say let me know where you're call calling from, like I'm on a radio show. Let me know where you're watching. Here it's uh, cold and it's not windy here, but it's really, really cold. So this is General Finishes, which is a simulated milk paint. And this goes on really nicely. And this has a finish that you don't really even need to put a top coat on. For durability, if you wanted to put a top coat on it, you could. But this guy, this paint is just beautiful. So this one, we've had these tables for a while and I asked Katie to send me home some stuff yesterday in case I got homebound. And she sent me three sweet little tables and some paint. So we're finishing them up. So this is the color. Let me get you in the light so you can see a little better. Now my dogs, oh my gosh, my dogs are gonna go crazy because the neighbor dog is out. Can you see this color at all? It's like a nice dark gray. I also painted my bathroom vanity with this gray color. Let's see, I'll put you back up here so you can see the table. Um, but basically all I did with this one was I, um, they'll stop barking eventually. Um, I washed it really well and I gave it um, a nice light sanding because it had a, um, really shiny finish to it and then I washed it down again after I sanded it and then this paint is just going on beautifully. Hold on, hold on one second. Bailey! Bailey! She's going to stand at the window and bark at the neighbor dogs. As soon as they go inside she'll stop barking so give it a minute. So this will get this will get only two coats because it's covering beautifully. And then it'll be ready to go. Such an easy way to upcycle a piece of furniture. Bailey, I know Wendy, she is. She's a monster. And Flynn, the beagle, is simply sitting on the couch deciding if he's too lazy to get up, which he usually is. So these little tables you can find anywhere. I see them when I'm thrifting all the time. Oh my gosh, you guys. So I was thrifting yesterday. I ran out to take a break from my office and I locked in to a whole set of ironstone. I'll show it to you, hold on. I have the creamer in here because we're putting it up on our Etsy site. So this is the creamer, how cute is this? Okay, so that's the creamer. It's this beautiful stamped ironstone in a pale green. It's so cute. It's a service for four. And it's got the dishes, the side plates, the creamer, the sugar, some serving pieces. You guys, that's why you have to go to the thrift store a lot. Because I was just there the day before yesterday. And I thought, oh, there's not going to be anything there. But I went anyways. I actually hit two thrift stores. Um, I went anyways and I found the, the iron stone. It was awesome. 
So as much as I want to keep it, because I do love my dishes, we're going to sell it. <laughs> It'll be up in our Etsy store probably next week. Normally we do our Facebook Live sale on Wednesday nights, but all of the stuff is at the store. So we moved that to um, tomorrow. But I will tell you a secret. Katie has already put all of the Facebook Live stuff up on the website. So if you wanted to go over there and shop it, you could. But we will be highlighting all of the items tomorrow live. But if you wanted to get a sneak peek and do a little buying, we always encourage buying. Which stores do you go to? Well, I have a fave. Actually, I don't have a fave. It's just the one by me. So I go to the Goodwill by me in Painesville. I haven't been to the Salvation Army and I did go to that one this week too. Those are really the only two that I go to because they're the only two that I have time to go to. Um, there are some other good ones around me. I just never have time. I generally run into those two because they're on my way around town. Um, and I've gotten in the habit now of going a couple times a week because I forgot how much I love it. Oh, I know. And I lucked into some half off ticketed stuff at Goodwill. Um, I forgot how much I actually love doing the thrifting part of my job and the picking. So I've decided that I'm going to do more of that because it gets really monotonous. You're not going outside doing the same thing every day. And I decided that I'm going to get back into doing what I like to do. So I'm going to hit the thrift store. And then when it gets nice out again, I'm going to hit some flea markets. Okay, because that's fun. It's a fun place to find treasures. Oh, I got a, I got a paint. Um, so if you ever get that, if your paint uh, brush starts to shed, just pick it out of there. You can also sand it out of there. But I like to try and keep an eye on it and pick it out of there. So we have a couple of paint classes coming up. We're doing a Miss Mustard Seed Paint a Stool class. And that's uh, next Wednesday night. We're going to paint a wood stool. And in February, we're going to be doing side tables. So if you want to come and paint with me and Vicki, we're doing a side table class towards the end of February, and that link is up on the website. It's a side table like this. You bring it in, and you um, do all of the work on it, and we help you through finishing it. So if you wanted to do that, we'd love to have you. It's a Sunday. It's a lot of fun. Um, this piece came as a set. It was this piece, a tall chest of drawers, and I can't remember what else was in it. Oh, like a little glove box. You know the glove boxes with the mirror that sit up on a dresser? We have, still have the dresser. We painted that in a cream color and we sold the glove box. I think we painted it black, I'm not sure. But this guy, nobody wanted him. He's been in the store for many months now. And so I've been tasked with painting him. And this great gray color is such a good neutral. I might distress it, I might not. You're not going outside. It's not happening for you today. No, you just were outside. Um, my dogs have been in and out all day. They're stir crazy, I'm sure like your dogs are. And I've had my seven-year-old, he's eight, I lied, um, here with me all day, right next to me, chatting up a storm. I do love my kids, but he just left for hockey and he's going to be gone for four hours. I'm not saying I'm happy about it. I'm just saying that it's really quiet here now. And I don't hate it. 
I've got a roast chicken in the oven. I made a big pan of cookies. Fire going. All in all, I do love a snow day. And the kids are off school tomorrow again. So if you just joined me, this is General Finishes in the color Driftwood. It's a simulated milk paint, which means it's basically an acrylic base and it has some of the properties of a milk paint, meaning that you can um, use it to upcycle a piece of furniture and it's going to be very furniture friendly. It's going to go nicely on your, paint, your piece of furniture. It's gonna take the paint well and you can distress it. Or um, I will say general finishes doesn't distress super easy. It's really good for cabinets. I painted my bathroom cabinet in this color. Um, so it's really a great brand of paint if you're wanting to paint your kitchen cabinets. And of course, any of these you can buy in the store. And we would we love to be able to help you through your project. Okay, so this is getting a coat of driftwood. This is the second coat actually. I did the first coat earlier today as my BFF sat next to me and chatted with me and wanted to know why he couldn't paint furniture too. Okay. So this one is just about finished. I don't think I'm going to distress this one because it looks really, really good. Honestly, if I was paying attention, I could have gotten away with one coat of this. But because I wasn't paying super close attention earlier, there were some spots I missed. But this paint covers so well that honestly, I think I could have gotten away with one coat. So this guy, I just need to do the drawer. I'm going to move it off of here. And do, oh, I did the drawer. We did the drawer when we first started. That's the drawer with that little acorn thingy thing. So this guy is done. Okay. I see a spot on the top. I'm just going to touch up real quick. All right, that guy is done. All right, so we're going to move to this little white table. And this table has already gotten a coat of, look at that cute little shape, cute little base. This has already gotten a coat. Wendy, I'm not even going to wax this one, that one. So General Finishes has a really great hard finish anyway. And because that is a side table, it's not going to get a ton of use. I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm going to let it dry and leave it as is. I'm not going to top coat it. This guy, we did a coat of our color of the month for February for Plum City Paint, which is Steamship. It's kind of like an off-white, not creamy, just a little bit of a dirty white. This has one coat of that. And I am going to do Miss Mustard Seed Arabesque over top of it, which is this color. It's a dusty pink. And Miss Mustard's, can you tell, can you see that at all? It's a dusty pink. Miss Mustard Seed is the traditional kind of milk paint in that it's a powdered paint. I'll show it to you. It's a powdered paint. We store them in here for our classes, but you can see it's a powdered paint. Excuse me. And you mix it with water, one part paint to one part water. And then you mix, 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 like I did about 10 minutes ago. And then you let it sit and you let it come together and thicken up. And then it should look like this. Just come off your spoon with just a steady stream. It is an, a natural paint in that it has four ingredients. 
and once you mix it because it's got milk product in it it lasts about three or four days so you just want to mix what you need and this is the paint that we're teaching in our class next Wednesday excuse me I need to throw my dog outside okay this is the paint we're teaching in our class next Wednesday and I tell folks that if you're looking to invest in a class the Miss Mustard Seed class is a great one to invest in because we teach you all of the mixing techniques and um, there are a few techniques involved in this paint, okay? So you're just gonna wanna stir it, let it sit 10 minutes like I already did, and now we're gonna paint, okay? And in a perfect world, I have my paintbrushes with me, but apparently um, my paintbrush is downstairs in the slap sink room, so hold on a second. Maddie? Maddie! Madeline! Of course, no one's around. You're gonna have to talk amongst yourselves while I go get my brush. Everybody's around all the time, except now. All right, so have a brush, which is important. This is a natural bristle brush, and it holds Miss Mustard Seed paint really, really well. We sell these in the store, love them. Soap and water cleanup, but this is gonna do really great for this piece. Let me see if I could put you somewhere a little better. Let's go here. Let's see here if this will be a little better so that you can see. Can you see there? All right, hold on. Here I come. I'm going to get my paint. That's terrible too. Okay, how about that? Oh, that is better. Okay, here we go. So we're going to paint this top, okay? So I'm going to do it here so you can kind of see a little better. Really not prepared you guys this is what happens when you fly by the seat of your pants with me I can't seem to get anything right here how about that can you see it I feel like you can possibly maybe there we go now my dog's coming in again you're not going out scooch up a terrible situation. Let's go back up here. Because usually I am totally, usually I am totally on the ball. But this time, oh, that's a little better. All right, maybe that's a little better. Okay. Um, so this is what we're going to do. Mix the paint. Okay, now this paint is just going to go on lovely. It's a dusty pink. And all you want to do when you're painting with Miss Mustard Seed is continue to swish the paint around in the container so that it stays mixed, okay? And I think what I'm going to do is just do the top of this and leave the base white. So you can see this pretty dusty pink. Okay. Paint on here. I like to use different paints and layer the paints. So the base again was our Plum City paint in white, which is like an off-white steamship color. And steamship is the color of the month for February. If you're not on our email list, you're going to want to do that because we just sent out a coupon for the colors of the month for February. You can get on our uh, email list 
at schoolhousesalvage.com, okay? And then all of the month of February, you can grab the colors of the month, which are Plum City Paint Steamship and Rust Belt and Miss Mustard Seeds Arabesque, which is this color. And I can't remember the other one. But I think what I'm gonna do is just do pink on the top of this table and keep the base white. What do you guys think? Should I do the whole table pink or just the top? Nobody's here to give me their opinion, so you guys need to weigh in on this. As soon as I turn the camera on, the girls run because they don't want to be on camera. And my bestie, he left. So it's just me and the dogs. What do you think, the whole table? Just the top, Leah? Okay. I think just the top too. And I think I'm gonna distress it, so hopefully I get a little white and pink. So that's it, that's the top of this. I only mixed up a little paint because you don't need uh, farmhouse white. Thank you, Katie. You don't need a lot, just the top. I know the top's adorable. So we're gonna do the base in um, Steamship. It's got one coat on there. If you want, if I had another brush and I wasn't so unorganized right now, I would do another coat of paint on this. Um, this would get another coat of you guys hear that steamship um, and this is the pretty top let me see I'll turn the light on can you see that better no it's awful look that's the pink it's just a really pale pink I think what I will do is use the extra paint and paint the bottom I like to paint the underside it just cleans it up nicely and it looks more finished so I'm gonna give the underside a quick coat that way it looks nice and finished. Sometime with, sometimes with used furniture, it's important just to clean it up a bit and painting the backs and the undersides and the drawers really give it, oopsie, I just totally did the base. That's all right, we'll paint right over that. It just freshens it up a little bit. Gives it a clean, finished feeling. Maddie, can you turn that off, please? Thank you. It's done. Huh? It's done. Nope, it's not done until I cut it. Hi, Rebecca. Everybody's circling the pan of cookies that I made. They're like vultures. What do you think of this color, Tuts? Snaz. Snaz? Well, it's kind of like the color of your walls, huh? Yeah. So Maddie just did um, this really cool paint treatment in her room. She taped off a bunch of triangles and geometric shapes and she did silver. Babe, feed the doggies. She did silvers and pinks. I don't know, you guys. I feel like I want to paint the whole table. What if I paint the whole table? No, you're right. I should leave the base white. You're right. Okay. Um, let me wash my brush and keep talking to you and then you can watch us paint the base because I mean what could be more fun right here you can see behind me that's my janky wall because we're in the middle of a kitchen renovation but this right here is my new faucet isn't it fab I love it so we're going to just wash this out and then we'll paint the base and maybe we can even get to waxing it okay so I was saying if you just jumped on, normally we do a Facebook Live sale Wednesday nights, but I haven't left the house. Um, I haven't left the house, and so the Facebook Live sale will be tomorrow night because I don't have any of the stuff here. However, I did notice earlier, Madeline, turn that off. I did notice earlier that Katie has all of the Facebook Live stuff loaded onto the website. So you can go to schoolhousesalvage.com slash shop slash Facebook Live sale 
and you can pre-purchase before we even do the live tomorrow, which is a ton of fun. Mads, can you do me a favor? Can you um, turn the oven up to 450, take the foil off the chicken, and set the timer for 20 minutes? Do I need an oven mitt to grab it? You do need an oven mitt to grab that, yes. Okay, well now that I have a clean brush, we're gonna go ahead and paint the base. The base of this has one coat of Steamship, and we're gonna paint it another coat. And then this will be ready to distress and wax. So let's just get this finished. Steamship is our off-white color, not cream. It's just definitely off-white. It's not um, a creamy color. It's just kind of like a dirty white. And I have one coat on this. So the prep with this was, it was washed, sanded, and now we're gonna give it probably two coats. Sometimes with white, you need multiple coats. I'm gonna see if I can get away with two coats of this because I'm gonna heavily distress it, so new options available for in-store. Ooh, all right, Katie. Katie has been hard at work today, earning her money. All right, so let me know what you guys are doing tonight because I'm running out of things to talk about. Um, like I said, we're housebound. So I think I've done eight loads of laundry today. I did my taxes. Are you feeding that dog salami? Yeah. No. I want to give her Madeline, check salami is expensive. Put that back in the refrigerator and give her a dog treat. What in the world? Madeline. Um, I did my taxes. I did the laundry. I made cookies. And now I've got chicken in the oven. So I'm a regular old Martha Stewart up in here. Um, we're gonna get this painted and then I have a third table that I'm doing down here. Um, so I'm bringing three tables into the store this weekend. I know that Vicki's been hard at work while I've been here and she's been redoing the store, some areas of displays that have sold. Um, so make sure to put us in your weekend plans because we're open uh, Thursday, 11 to 3, Friday, 11 to 3, and every Saturday, 11 to 3. What kind of paint? Um, this paint is our Plum City paint. It's a matte finish furniture paint. Um, it's an acrylic base, which means it is very, very durable. It dries very quickly, and you will want to seal it. You can seal it with any of our Plum City paint sealers. We most oftentimes use Miss Mustard Seed clear wax that we sell. Um, you do wanna have caution when you're doing any of the whites of any brand of paint that when you put a top coat on them, they will yellow, any brand of paint. So we most oftentimes wax no matter what color, but definitely on a white, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you um, are very careful with your top coats. It is pretty. This one is just a creamy, it's not creamy, I lied. It's just a dirty white. Um, we call it Steamship because it kind of just has, um, if you really want to know why, it kind of looks like dirty steam coming from a Steamship. Um, that's why we named it Steamship. All of our Plum City paint colors are named after Northern Ohio uh, landmarks or icons or those types of things. So we have Rust Belt, we have Steamship. Um, help me out, you guys, what else do we have? We have um, West Side Market. What else do we have? We have Detroit Superior, which is our black. It's named after a bridge here. Our black is probably the best black I have ever seen on furniture paint. And it is so, so popular. You can buy all of our paints 
on our website at schoolhousesalvage.com. Oh, you totally should, Diane. You should come up. North Canton, that's like an hour and a half. That's a great day trip. We would love to have you up here. Are you kidding me now? Another dog's going out. Maddie, your dog needs to go out. So I didn't grow up with dogs. Millionaire's Row, Katie, is a great one. Flynn, go outside. Go. Give him a toot in the... No? Okay. Um, so I didn't grow up with dogs, but Ron did. And so we have dogs. And Maddie, who just walked by, loves her dog. But I end up taking the most care of the dog. Excuse me? It's true. It's no, totally true. It's totally true. They all think they take care of the dogs. But I they don't. do. No. Where were you this morning at six when they wanted to go out? Well, I went to bed at three. Okay. Well, that every day at six. No one gets up with them. I get up with them. <laughs> uh, five dogs. Holy smokes! Listen. Natalie has seven dogs. Stop it. I am like, I'm not a dog person. I'm not gonna lie to you. But we have two. And we had one before this, and when she passed away, I immediately had to get another dog, because apparently I need to have a dog. I've turned into a dog person. Um, we have a beagle, don't we, Flynn? And we have a Weimariner. And they are two very, two very different dogs. Two very different size dogs. All right, so this guy is almost done. I will have to flip it over to get some of the curves, but I at least wanted to get another coat of paint on this because I'd like to finish these off tonight, if I could. So it seems like now that it's um, January, everybody is freshening up their furniture with paint or freshening up their spaces. What are you guys working on? We totally freshened up the whole entire warehouse in January. So if you haven't been in, oh, oh, I wanted to say one more thing. Um, we have spaces for four more pop-up shops. So in our warehouse, we have 10,000 square feet, about 4,000 of it we offer to pop-up shops. So you can come in and rent space monthly if you're a collector or a maker or a crafter. You can come in and join our family of pop-up shops. And it's awesome. It is awesome. Our pop-up shops have everything from mid-century modern to handmade art. We have some really cute um, handmade baby items, and pretty much anything. So if you're interested, let me know. You can message me, um, amy at schoolhousesalvage.com, and I can give you all the details. We have two folks moving in um, this week and next, and we would love to add you to our family of pop-up shops. are open now um, seems like every day of every month uh, vintage clothing Katie that right there might have been your best idea today I would love to have a vintage clothing shop I would love to have <coughs> somebody that does hold on kind of like a boho feeling, like a bohemian, eclectic feeling of furniture and rugs and fabrics. Um, but we have such a good mix of people and snacks. <laughs> Mary Beth kitchen cabinets, that's awesome. Are these your kitchen cabinets that you've been painting? I started mine and I haven't finished them. Um, I think that's it for this guy. He's going to get some distressing. So I think he might be good. So basically what we're going to do 
after this is go at it with some sandpaper and the top's almost dry so I'll let you stick around for this. Um, and when we distress we like to, I like to, and Vicki has taught me, um, to sand the whole piece and then go a little heavier in areas where you want it to be distressed. That way it's nice and smooth, nice and uniform. Let's see, I think I've got it all. I mean, I told Katie to bring me home some tables. She brought me home the most curvy, intricate tables in our whole stash. Like, I want to sit here and paint with an artist's brush. Okay. But I did it because I'm up for the challenge and I don't whine. I mean, I do whine, I just not a lot of whining. Okay. Okay, so this guy is just about done. Let's see how dry the top is. And it's still a little damp, but I think I'm going to show you how we distress it. doing this on my kitchen counter like the worst place um hold on no you're not going out ski come on Glenn. come on come on all right now the two of you skedaddle here while i'm waiting for that to dry i'll show you the other one this one can you see that i'm painting in rust belt which is one of our reds in plum city paint it's more of a um dark red and our millionaire's row is more of a bright red so this guy is getting a coat of millionaire's row and right now the dogs are going to pretend fight it's going to get for real loud up in here all right hold on all right so this is what we're going to do i am going to show you how we distress let me clean up some of this so i don't make a bigger mess and i'll show you how i distress everybody distresses differently um I'm the lazy painter, and I will simply wrap this brush. Right. So what I like to use is a fine sandpaper. Um, this one is 220. It's probably good. That's all Katie sent home with me, so it's going to have to be good, right? Okay. So if you're using a distressing paint, it's going to be very, very easy to distress. Okay. Um, see that guy? So all you're going to do, do we make the paint? Yes, so our Plum City paint we have manufactured for us from a paint manufacturer. We don't mix it in our warehouse, but we have it mixed for us out of Canton. It's a family owned business that we work with that mixes the paint for us. You can find all of the colors either on our website, schoolhousesalvage.com or our paint website, plumcitypaint.com. The top of this guy is in Arabesque by Miss Mustard Seed. So you're gonna take your fine grit sandpaper and you're gonna give it a light sanding. Okay. And I just want the white and brown to come through just a little bit. And if you distress the whole piece, you're going to see that it's going to look more uniform. And you're just going to want to go heavier in areas where you want to distress. So this, the legs are awesome, I know. So this is fun because of the curvy top. And this is going to look really great distressed. So you're just going to hit it lightly. No pressure at all, you guys. Because this is a distressing paint, it's really going to be very easy to get some details. Now I do tell, we just taught a chair class on Sunday. And what I like to tell people is 
when you're redoing a used piece of furniture, it's already got some love on it. And that's the reason why we're painting it, right? We're kind of giving it a new life. And so, ooh, I am loving this. Um, I, uh, you just give it a new life and it's already got some love on it. So adding a little distressing to it is really just going to enhance it. Um, obviously you can take a used piece of furniture and do it with no distressing like we did on the side table that we started with. But I really like just to give it a little more um, age, a little more wear. Thank you, Mary. I know Mary Beth, those are, our paint is pretty cool. I've never used, I've used our paint and I've used general finishes and Miss Mustard Seeds and I've used um, a distressing paint called Vintage Farmhouse that we first started with back in 2012. Those are the only paints I've used. I've never painted with anything else, but I have been told by painters that our paint is very nice to work with compared to other brands. Oh my gosh, this little table is adorable. And I'm super modest. Wait, I'm gonna show you, hold on. Cause I'm sure this is boring. I'm gonna show you an up close of how it's looking. All right, let me turn the light on. And I'm gonna show you an up close, hold on. Okay, so let me get, see if I can get you in. Holy shadows. Do you see how adorable the distressing is on the curves? Just the light distressing along the top. You can see some of the whites and browns. It's just got a sweet little um, detail to it. So basically, I just like to take and sand the whole thing so that it's nice and smooth but go heavier in areas where you want the wear. Now, for me, it looks the most natural when you have wear on the places that's already gonna get some wear and not in the middle of a whole piece that has no wear, that looks kind of fake. But you wanna go heavier in the areas that would see natural wear, okay? And like I said, the paint is so easily distressed you really are not having to put a ton of work into it. Okay. So let's see, we could do a little more on this one. Okay. And it's fun to keep, it's fun to try a piece and distress a piece that's got some curves to it. Because it gives it a little detail. See that? Oops. Sorry. The camera didn't like when I rotated like that. All right, so we're just going to finish sanding this guy. You see how easy it is? I mean, it's really, truly such a great piece to work with. Okay, and I've already done the top. The top is pink, if you remember. I'm gonna probably flip it over and do more of the feet, but I will show you the waxing too. If you wanna stick with me, I'll show you how we wax. Okay, so give me one second. Let me flip you around so I can finish sanding and then I'm gonna show you the wax we use. And I'll show you just quickly how to wax it. I think I have time before my dinner comes out of the oven. Okay. So don't forget, if you're wanting to take a class, we have a Miss Mustard Seed class. Um, next Wednesday night, we're painting a stool, and then we have a paint and end table class in February, which is right around the corner, and Katie put those links up, so if you want to sign up, we have limited space for both, because we like to give you some attention, and we don't like to fill up the class, so you're going to want to make sure that you get signed up if you're interested. We're also still taking registration for our Maker's Day, which is four projects, four hours, and that's on February 9th. It's all day, it's a full catered lunch, 
and the four projects are up on the website. And if I do say so myself, they're fabulous. So you're gonna wanna get signed up for the Maker's Day. There's a bit of prep work we have to do for Maker's Day, so if you are thinking about it, it'd be awesome if you went ahead and signed up so we knew how much stuff to prep. All right, so these guys are done. Hey, Mads. Let me get my chicken out of the oven. Oh yeah. All right, that's done. Oh my God. The chicken looks so good. Hi, Jim Yarshin. Okay. So, there's one spot up here that I need to sand a little more before we wax it. So we're gonna get hit that with the sander. Okay, so now we're just gonna take a microfiber cloth <laughs> and we're gonna dust it all off. And then what you want to do with your wax is use a clean, lint-free rag. I know, this table is so cute. I'm digging it. Let me turn this light off so you can kind of see. It's getting dark in here. Um, I am going to attempt to wax it with this rag, this green rag. Hopefully it won't. Um, the color won't transfer. But we use Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint Wax on everything. It is a soft wax, it's a clear wax. There's no odor to it. You could see it looks like this. It's very soft and creamy. It comes in, I don't know, a round container. I can't remember how many ounces it is. We sell it in the store. We use it for everything. It's just a very soft wax, see that? You're just gonna take some on your rag. Okay, let's all pray that this bright green doesn't bleed on my pink. And you're gonna rub it in. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. And this is just really going to seal in the color. It's going to enrich the color and it's going to protect it. There are so many different schools of thought on wax and whether it's protective or not. I would say if you're doing a tabletop that you're gonna eat on every day or a dresser top that's gonna to get a ton of wear, you might wanna consider using a clear coat. Other than that, we wax everything. I've had a buffet here that I've had for four years that has worn beautifully. You should probably get your snout off my counter. And I've never re-waxed it, okay? So, to finish up this, I like to do the waxing in sections, okay? And then you just wanna buff it. You wanna really work it into the paint and then if you do it right, you're going to feel a beautiful, silky smooth finish, okay? Oh my gosh, you guys, I wish you could see this up close. I'm gonna try and let you see it up close because <laughs> this pink with the little bits of brown underneath and a little of the white, oh, you guys, I'm dying, it's so cute. All right, let me wax underneath just so that it's all protected. These will all be in the shop for Saturday. Uh, we are open tomorrow and Friday. 
but the sky will be in its final resting place for sure on Saturday. Okay, now let me try and show you how this looks with the wax and the distressing, okay? I'm gonna take you in here. The color is Arabesque by Miss Mustard Seed. All right, I'm gonna turn you around. See if you could, oh, let's see, see if you could see this. Oh, you guys, this light is terrible. Can you see this? This beautiful little bit of brown, little bit of white peeking through. And if you could feel it, it is so buttery smooth. It's such a cute little guy. You see the little bit of distressing down there? I'm going to wax the rest of this. I'm going to wax the rest of this guy and finish up a couple of the other little tables. I think this one that we looked at earlier is done. I'll put it up here again so you can see it. This is driftwood. Can you see that? This is driftwood um, by General Finishes on this cute little side table. And this won't get any distressing unless uh, Vicki thinks it needs it. And this won't get a top coat either because General Finishes, you can get away with no top coat. So this guy will be done. Okay. And then I have my other red one on the floor that I will hopefully get done today or tomorrow. All right, so you could check out all of our paints online, schoolhousesalvage.com. You could check out our classes if you want to do some hands-on learning. And you can check out our Facebook Live sale that was supposed to be tonight. It's all listed on the website. There's some really cute vignettes in there, some candles, and some signs. So head on over. I'm going to finish this off and feed my people. And I will talk to you guys later, okay?